welcome to Liberty Live. Today we're going to be talking about the call of Isaiah, Yeshiyahu in the Hebrew, which is the salvation of God. Now, in Isaiah chapter 6, we come across this unbelievable passage. And here's what it says. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And I saw the seraphims crying out, Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh Adonai Tzabayoth, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is filled with his glory. And then uh, he sees this dialogue and the angels are coming over to him. Let me read it to you. The foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. By the way, this smoke is ketoret. It literally means the smoke that is set apart, hallowed or holy. It's not a joke word. It's not a pun. It's not something you say when things don't go right and you're trying to be polite. You know, instead of using harsh language, this is ketoret. Ketoret is the smoke that comes from the altar if one is praying and burning incense to the Lord in the house of God, the Mishkan, the Beth HaMikdash. Let's go on. Woe is me, I said, for I am lost. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. This is like what Cephas or Peter said when he saw Jesus' miracle power by the grace and power of the manifested God. He said, I, I'm a sinner, depart from me, I'm unworthy. And you have to understand, our worth is a gift from God. Even our worth, our righteousness is a gift from God. It's imputed, it's given to us by grace. One of the seraphim then took one of the burning coals with tongues. These are tongues. This is one of the burning coals from the altar. He took the coal, touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin atoned for. Holy is the Lord. Let me tell you a little bit about this, what this coal is about. First of all, to get a piece of coal like this, it comes from a piece of wood. A wood that is offered to God and burned down and condensed after offerings of sacrifice and service. Sacrifice and service, it condenses down. So to get a coal like this, first of all, it's prayer, fasting, giving, serving, honoring, uh, repentance, prayer, blessing, thanksgiving. This coal has such worth. The second thing is that this coal is on the altar that is outside in the Azara, the temple court, but it's outside the holy place where the golden altar is. In other words, in order to get a coal like this to burn incense, you have to take something from the outside to the inside. And the outside is not the out outside like the world. It's like the, the, the place where people are already praying, making vows, commitments, dedication, serving, honoring, believing into a place of greater dedication, greater holiness. So two things are happening. One, by the way, you ever seen a real seraphim? Let me show you a few pictures. Here, here, and here. Look at the six wings here. How could, so by the way, when people honor God and they understand his true worth, they can only bow down. He's so great. And we bow like this, humans. And so how could an angel with six wings bow? Because the wings are always in flight. It's like a fish. You know, how could a, a fish has to flap his fins, right? So what happens is two cover their face, two cover their feet, so that's the same thing as being prostrated like we are. And with two, they fly because they have to be in flight around the Lord. That's their perpetual command. Now, because there's a glory there as well, like a hawk and flight, an eagle and flight, a dove, it's, it's almost un, unmatched. And that's why they're also creatures. One of them has the face of an eagle. One of them has the face of a man. One of them has the face of an ox. And one of them has the face of a lion. Now, these are some of the glory of God, the king of the sky, the king of the animal kingdom, the king of the toe power, raw power, and, and who is in the image of God, man. And man has dominion over all the animals, which represent his majesty, his strength, and his dominion or his authority, the Lion of Judah. Uh, and like Aleph is the strength of God, the strength of the Lord, and it represents an ox. And man is in the image of God and an eagle it says in Job by your command does the eagle soar and in Revelation it says there was an eagle flying across the throne saying woe to the inhabitants of the earth so we're seeing this angelic and heavenly activity 
And we also have to understand these creatures are designed to give glory and honor to God. So let me tell you what's happening. The glory of God, the majesty of God in the throne room, which is Kodesh, 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 the Lord's holy place. He's taking something like this, a coal that is used to burn incense perpetually, which are the prayers of the saints. So something that is so sacred and holy is an altar, which is only for God, only to be used for God's purposes, only originated by God. You know, Noah landed the ark. He built an altar. Joshua crossed over the promised land. He built an altar. Moses goes to Mount Sinai. He builds an altar. Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem after seven years in Babylon, builds an altar. Adam and Eve's first children in the world build an altar and make offerings. So this idea is not a new idea. This is like from the beginning um, that God has given us such a great tool to communicate and to make offerings and memorials and even when you get married, there's an altar. Every church has an altar. In other words, this is set up by God, for God, and through God. And what goes on the altar on the outside is our sacrifice and our service. What goes on the altar inside is the fruit of that, which is the coal. And that coal, which is holy, sanctified, accepted, by the way, accepted, dedicated, labored over, seasons of maturity, seasons of time. Uh, it is not just holy, it's the holy place. It's, it's holy, holy until so you go into the Kodesh HaGodeshim, the holy, holy place, the most holy place. This is even brought on Yom Kippur before the ark to bring prayer and to, to, to fill the earth with God's glory because God commanded that the praise and thanks would be inhabited by God. In other words, that his people would come to him with worship, prayer, and thanks as the Lord blesses, honors, and uh, anoints. And so we have this amazing perpetual given relationship. By the way, God gave. God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus Christ ascended and he gave apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, gifts to men. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. And the Holy Spirit gives gifts severally and individually as he will. So God has given everything. Not that we love God, but he loved us first. Is it so much that we would give back to God? But even how can we give? It says if we are being wicked, know how to give good gifts. How, how much more will the Father pour out the Holy Spirit for those who ask? Ask for the promise of Ezekiel, beloved. Ask for the promise of Shavuot, Pentecost. The Father is willing to fill you with the Holy Spirit and give breath to your life, breath to your mortal body, the Ruach Kodesh, the life of God that he filled in Abram when he made Abraham, Lachaim, life. Okay. And Isaac and Jacob carried the torch, the life of God, the fire of God, the breath of God. By the way, no wind, no fire, no oxygen, no torch, no fire rather. So you take this coal, it's ignited by the fire, it holds the charge, it holds, it's like a man uh, ready to do good works. He's holding the charge of God. Whatever touches him becomes holy to God. Or rather, this is Jesus Christ, the real coal. And this sanctifier, the Lord our God, touches our lips, touches our heart, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. This coal touches our lips, out of the overflow of our mouth, out of our lips. The fruit of our lips is the name of Jesus Christ, by the way. This is what's written in the Brit Kadasha, the new covenant. And so this coal touches the lips, a place of dedication, a place of consecration, a place of holy, hallowed anointing by God. And what, what he's really saying is, I'm going to make you a man of prayer. I'm going to give you words of prayer and prophecy to the four corners of the earth. I'm going to make you something that you were not by man. I'm going to make you something that you are by God. And that is holy to the Lord. You see, the fire, the fire of God, the sanctity, the refiner's fire, the spirit of fire, the spirit of burning, God's a consuming fire, so if he touches you with something, he uses to consume. By the way, do you know coal consumes incense? And it turns it from solid to ketoret, to smoke. This is what God is saying to us. Sanctify your lips. Let no ill will come out of you. Do not complain. Do not steal. Do not kill. Do not covet. Do not commit adultery. Do not dishonor God. Don't take his name in vain. Do not create false things for false gods who are not gods. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. What is love? It's holy to God. It's of the Lord. It's from the Lord because God is love. So if God's taking this coal and making the salvation of God, making us sanctified, making us clean, we who are unclean. There's this famous song. Take me past the whole outer courts into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. And it, it, take me past the courts of people and the, to the priests that sing their praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, and I only sing one, only think one thing. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Here's the punchline. Take the coal. 
touch my lips, here I am. Beloved, God is willing to make you clean. Will you let his fire, his word, his sanctity touch your lips? Will you let it touch your heart? Will you be found where Isaiah was in the presence of God? Will you be praying? Will you be fasting? Will you be serving? Will you be honoring? Beloved, it's a free gift, but even someone has to open their hands to receive the gift. This is why it is written, if he, we being wicked know how to give good gifts, how much more will the Holy Spirit be poured out by the Father for those who ask? Okay, so what is this really saying, beloved? That is saying that the will of heaven will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. If God takes men like Isaiah, John, Ezekiel, takes them up, come back down sober. In other words, let let the things of earth be transitory, let the things of heaven be forever, but let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have to be touched by God to see God, to hear God, to speak God, to speak the oracles of the Lord. The Bible says whatever is pure, peaceful, and lovely, focus and meditate on these things. In order to do that, you have to be touched by God, by his word, by his spirit, by his understanding. Beloved, you can't serve God without God. If God doesn't command you, you can obey. Do you know what I'm saying? If, if God doesn't give, if he doesn't love you first, how can you accept his love and be saved? If he doesn't give you grace, you have no life. If he doesn't forgive your sins, you remain cut off. But if he forgives your sins, if he makes you clean, if he atones for you, then the fruit of the coal, the fruit of the fire, the fruit of the altar, the fruit of the temple, the fruit of the mishkan is to understand the Lord of the mishkan, to understand the Lord of the temple. It's not the gift. It's the giver of the gift, the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ. Beloved, let his hand stretch forth, touch your heart, let it touch your lips, that you would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and be saved.